there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today it's another tea break repair and in this video we're going to be fixing up this little strength ball Dynaglow here. Now I believe it's used for strengthening up your arms and also I think as a bit of fun because it probably feels quite nice if it's spinning really fast and you're keeping the momentum up. Now I bought it 40 off eBay for £6.60 which is I'm sure you could get a used working one for that price. It said in the listing that the thing that wasn't working, it said that the lights light up on the ball itself, but the display at the top's not working. So I think at the top here, it counts to revolutions that, uh, that it does. Just instructions and uh, using the built-in rev counter. Okay, so that's what that top bit is, a rev counter. Changing batteries, right, it might be as simple as just needing new batteries. So this must be the string to get it kick-started. So, uh, there we go, little hole here. And then, let's give it a pull. Yeah, I can see it lighting up just ever so slightly there. I presume the faster you do it, the more it lights up. Not sure how it works yet, I'm, I'm, you must have to get a certain rhythm going. But anyway, let's have a look up the top here. Yeah, there's nothing happening here. So it might be as simple as batteries. Let's take it apart and let's see what's going on. Definitely looks like it's been pried quite a few times on these bits here. So it might not be the batteries. Let's prise it open. Awkward. Right, so what we got here? Well, I can see the two batteries, so let's uh, undo the screws and then we can measure the batteries. Looks like we've got prongs out here which are not soldered. Maybe that's something to do with the screen. Oh, the prongs are for the button presses. Right, that's fine. And we've got a blob chip, and these are the two contacts here for the batteries, and they look a little bit corroded, so there might have been a bit of leaking at some stage. Got a little crystal here. And we got a, uh, what's this here now? I know what that is, that's a reed switch. I've seen that before. So this must have a magnet inside it, and every time it passes, there must be a magnet on one of the top bits here or something. Would that be it there? Oh, that's a, no, that's an LED. Well, I've oh, got two LEDs there and there. Let's have a look this side. Oh, we've got LEDs here and here. Oh, I wonder, I didn't see those ones lighting up there, but we can check that, we can check that at the end. It doesn't really come apart, and oh, actually, it would come apart from here. So it's probably glued or plastic welded together. Anyway, there must be some magnet somewhere which passes this, and it must just kind of like make, break, make, break, make, break, like that to count the revolutions. Oh, yeah, it's broken. Let me zoom in. Look, the glass is gone. Should be This should be sealed in the glass, right? Don't know if that's gonna work now. Not too sure whether that would work or not. I suppose it's not. Maybe it has to be in a vacuum for, uh, for it to work properly. Oh, that's annoying. Well, let's see if we can get it working. Maybe we can worry about the read switch later. Right, so batteries, what we got here now? Little zebra connector and uh, LCD. And that's to join the batteries together. Let's check out the LCD. Oh, it just lit up there. Excellent, well that means it's not uh, it's not smashed. Sometimes just a static from yourself can make it make it light up. And it's got a little zebra connector, so it's quite clever. Can you see there when the light's shining off at all these contacts? So there's going to be however many contacts there are there, I'm not counting, but 10 or 15. And yet on the zebra connector, there's hundreds of connections there. And 
as long as they make the connection through, then it's fine. So it doesn't matter whether it's there or there, all those points are gonna travel through that zebra connector to the contacts on here. So basically we're gonna have the same amount of contacts here, this strip here with all the lines on it, as here. Yeah, so it's just an easy way of joining up the two together. Well, let's not worry about any of that. Let's give this a clean up because that looks a bit dodgy. And also let's measure the batteries and see what they're measuring. 0.8 volts, so that's flat. Minus 0.2, well that's weird, but that's definitely completely and utterly flat. On these ones here, that's the uh, negative there. Okay, so it needs two new batteries. So we'll get the batteries in and then we'll see if, let's clean it up, get batteries in and let's see if that reed switch is doing anything. Without the reed switch, I mean, it's still gonna be fun for it to work, but it would be nice to try to beat your previous score. Just using some isopropyl alcohol. So it looks like the batteries must have leaked at some stage. Let's get it back together, see what it's doing. Now, do you know what I didn't do? I didn't really take notice of how the batteries went in and I can't see any uh, obvious signs on here. I can't see any positive or negative. Right, so let's now see if I've got replacement ones of these. These are LR41. Right, these are not the right ones, but they look to be the same diameter. It's just the depth, these are a bit thinner, but I'm thinking with the springs, I should be okay. I can always buy some anyway if it works. Right, you know something's been glaring me in the face here. We've got a positive and negative here, haven't we? So why don't I just put the probe on a positive, see what pad it's coming up on, and do the same on the negative, and that will tell me definitely then which way the batteries go round. Because remember this has been a part before, so uh, it doesn't mean that the original way that they were is the correct way. So I'm on the positive, got my meter set to continuity. Right, so that's the positive side. Is that how I had it before? No, it's not. I had it the other way. Now let's check the negative. Before I had the negative on here. But this is the negative. Right. So this is the negative here. So it has to be this way round. No, still nothing. Yes, there's something. There we go. Excellent, there's something. Right, let's get it screwed back up and then let's see if this reed switch is actually gonna do anything or not. Right, let's see now. Here we go. Excellent. Right, I'll have to read up what they, what they mean. So that is indicates RPM, indicates a maximum RPM that has been reached. This can be cleared by pressing the on and clear button. So let's clear that. Okay, so that's cleared now. Yeah, shows the RPM reach within 60 seconds. Use this function to race your friends. Right, I don't think any of those functions are gonna work, but let's, uh, let's see. All right, let's see if it registers anything. No, it's not gonna. So uh, I have to look into getting a reed switch because otherwise it's pointless having this display. It doesn't do anything. So I had a look on eBay at reed switches and I bought 10 of them for £2.50, so 25p each. I got ones that are two millimeters in diameter for the glass and that's the same as here. 14 millimeters glass length and that's the same as here and the lead itself is 45 millimeters. So hopefully it'll be exactly the same. These are normally open until the magnet comes and then it closes. And look, I know it's not a very scientific way of doing it, but when I short it with the tweezers, it is registering as, a, uh, as an input. So watch this. I do this, can you see? And if I go faster, I think it does increase. There you go. So I've just got to wait until they arrive and then uh, hopefully this will be up and running again. And just while I'm waiting for the reed switch to arrive, I'm just getting my practice in. Check out the lights on this thing. It's definitely lighting up on both sides. And it is quite addictive, but uh, I haven't really mastered it yet. But I can keep it going for quite a while. Anyway, next time you see this, hopefully it'll be able to be doing its counting like uh, 
like it was designed to. So about a week's passed because Raw Mail are all backlogged with their mail at the moment. But look, all my little read switches have arrived, all 10 of them. And just to show you how they work, so we've got our meter set to continuity. So when we hit the leads together, it makes a noise. And we have a little Madrid fridge magnet here. So there's a couple of magnets just at the back. Now, if you have a listen, when I go across here and here, there is no continuity. But as I bring it closer to the magnet, you can hear I've now got continuity there. Yep. So when the uh, when this is whizzing round, the magnet is making this open and close. So let me solder this into this one here, and then we'll see if it's working. Okay, so that's it in now. I broke one of them trying to put them in because the glass is really, really fragile. So unless you bend it exactly correctly, when you go to kind of readjust it, the glass just snaps a little bit. So a tiny little chip came out. So I had to put another one in. So let's get this back inserted in and let's see now if it's reading properly. Now, if you watch this, you can see, hold on. I've just got it resting here. And when I turn it here, you see it starts counting. Just giving it tiny little spins. Thing is, I can't see how that reed switch is opening and closing that many times. I think it's just kind of taking a guess on the amount of time maybe it's opened or closed. Now, I thought it'd be interesting to hook up the scope to this here. So I've just got these two wires coming out the reed switch. Now, in my opinion, there's no way that that reed switch can be moving the amount this is saying, because when we spin it here, it comes up with, for example, 363. But I don't think that that's gone round that many times. Also, it's not right anyway, because look, I can see here, the revolutions are probably 10 or 20. But I think it's a kind of estimation of it. And when you look here, you can actually see the reed switch uh, turning on and off. So watch this now. When I just turn it very slowly, you'll see that the magnets, and there you go. See, the magnet is only at one revolution per, per spin. So when I spin it like this, you can see every time it goes down, the magnet's passing. And then the faster we do it, the more down bits there will be, like so. So I don't quite know how it's working out the, the revolutions. It just must be they must have maybe, would they have done some sort of camera to see how many times it was turning and then see how many times the reed switch goes on and off? And then if, for example, this has spun a thousand times and the reed switch has gone on and off maybe 10 times, that's how they calculate it. There you go. Anyway, I'm gonna desolder these wires now and give it one final test. Right, so here we go, got it going. You can see that the uh, revolution is there, 2,000. The most I've had it up to is 5,000. So let's just see. Uh, it sounds nice when you really get it going. It sounds like a kind of engine running and it's, uh, it's got a lot of power to it. Now, if you listen to that, Oh, it's quite addictive. And there you go, 5,000, 5,188. You can see the strength of it. So that is it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a massive thumbs up. Take care. Bye now.